So somebody want to know how do we differentiate non-arteritic or arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy disc edema from the disc edema that we see in a central retinal vein occlusion. And as, as you know, in the eye, the good news about the optic nerve head, it only has two pathologic responses to disease. It can either swell or it can be pale. Unfortunately, the optic nerve has only two pathologic responses to disease. It can swell or be pale. And that means that swelling actually doesn't tell you what the problem is. It just says something is wrong right there. And one of the things that could be wrong is that the problem is in the anterior, anterior to lamina cribosa, and from ischemia of the optic nerve. And that thing can be arteritic or non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. And so that presents with a swollen optic nerve. However, because there's mechanical compression of the little blood vessels on the nerve itself, it can cause hemorrhages to occur. And those hemorrhages are going to be flame hemorrhages or disc hemorrhages. And so it could superficially look like the vein is blocked. And that's because in central retinal vein occlusion, you also have disc edema, you also have flame hemorrhages, but in a typical central retinal vein occlusion, the hemorrhages are going to be four quadrant hemorrhages. You're going to have venous dilation and tortuosity, and you're going to have macular edema. So the presence of macular edema, four quadrant hemorrhage, and a disc that is swollen is much more compatible with central retinal vein occlusion. Anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, disc edema, the hemorrhages have to be confined to the disc. And you might say, well, that seems obvious. Well, the problem is sometimes you have an incomplete central retinal vein occlusion, or you just have inflammation of the vein on the disc head, which we call papillophilitis. Those patients will not have the four quadrant hemorrhage. They just have some hemorrhage. And so my rule of thumb is I'm not going to allow hemorrhages to occur more than one disc diameter away from the nerve. Once we see the hemorrhage beyond that point, I'm going to be looking for venous dilation beyond one disc diameter of the disc. If we see venous dilation, tortuosity, hemorrhage beyond one disc diameter, and macular edema, even though that can occur in NAION, I'm going to be favor incomplete central retinal vein occlusion. And of course, it's a super important decision because CRVO is usually from hypertension. And in young people, you got to think about the hypercoagulable state of and a hypercoagulable state of malignancy and other venous side problems. And in AION, that's an arterial side disease, not a venous side disease. And in arteritic AION, that's arteritis, giant cell arteritis. So giant cell arteritis cannot cause a central retinal vein occlusion because it's a venous side disease. And NAION can cause a swollen disc, but really shouldn't cause a CRVO. So you need to be able to differentiate NAION, AAION, and CRVO.